Hi guys, this is Bill from Spencer1984.com, and today we're going to take a look at the Fast and Furious Dominic's 1970 Dodge Charger from Ravel. This is a new kit from Ravel, just came out this month, and it's their first time doing a 70 Charger in plastic. They've had their 68 and 69 kits out for a while, and back when the first movie came out, they did a die-cast version of this car. But this is somewhat new territory for them. We'll take a look at it. Got a big close-up picture of the model on the front of the box, and unfortunately we can already see some accuracy issues in that the headlights are covered and the supercharger belt is not. But we'll get into this a little bit closer as I look through the kit, and I'll also be doing some comparisons between this one and the other two plastic as well as the die cast. At any rate, here on the side, got some alternate views of the car, back, engine, interior, some of the write-up. The ends have a repeat of the cover art. And the last side has all of the legal information, the write-up, and what you'll need to build it. Take a look inside. And the instructions follow Ravel's most recent style. The staple booklet. Parts call-outs on the first couple of pages. And then exploded diagrams for everything else. Finishing off with some profile views of the car for the final detail work. We got the decal sheet here, and it's got the instruments, the script, side marker lights, some markings for the supercharger, and license plates. Now, moving on to the kit itself, first thing we've got is a bag of tires. We've got two street tires and two slicks, and these are hollow tires. So they're not the ones that came in the 68 kit, as you can see those are solid tires. So those are something new for a charger kit. And here's the body, which does appear to be the all new tooling that was promised. And it does look very much like the 68 and 69 kits, but it should. Full size cars looked very much the same. Here's the 68-69 car, and you can see the most obvious difference is the front fenders. You know, this cutout versus where the bumper was on the original car. But it's got a lot of smaller differences too. Let's see if we can take a look here where the 70 actually has the side marker light cast in place. The 70 has a hole in the door for the side view mirror. The fuel fill is a little bit different. The 70 kit has a D-shaped opening with a lip around it, where the 6869 didn't have that lip and just a round hole. The door scoops are shaped a little bit differently. Very close, but the new kit, they're a little bit smaller and a little bit higher. The crease is also more sharply defined on the old kit than it is here. And again, marker lights in the back. Where the C pillar meets the fender, looks like it's a little bit sharper on the new kit. But the parting line's in the same spot right there on the fender, so that'll still have to be cleaned up, just like always. Both of them do have the proper badge there on the bottom of the front fender. And overall size and shape, they appear to be the same, which ideally is what we want. So none of the problems like we saw with the Oldsmobile being a different scale from the Monte Carlo and the Butte Grand National. And here's the chassis. While it looks very similar to the 68-69 kits, there are enough differences in the details that I believe they're claimed that this is an all new tooling. Here's the 68-69, and if we compare the two, there are a lot of details that are different between them. Starting at the back, the fuel tank is a little bit smaller on the new one. It's got a little bit more of a gap between it and the rear cross member. The shock mounts are a little bit different between the two. The new kit has a little finer detailing on it, a little smaller piece right there. Up front, 
This is almost completely different shape between the two. The engine mounts are more offset on the old kit. They're just about straight across from each other on the new one. And the upper A-arms are also different between the two. These old kit had holes where the new one has notches for the kingpins to mount to. So, it looks good, it's nice and sharp, but it is an all new piece. It's not just a retooling of the old one. And here we've got the interior, and with it we come to the first disappointment as far as this being an accurate Fast and Furious car, as this is a stock 70 Charger interior. It's got carpeting, it's got the rubber mat in the driver's footwell, it's got markings for two bucket seats, and it's got the speaker grills in the back dash. And none of that is accurate to the Fast and Furious car. Dom's car had a stripped interior, as it was designed for drag racing. So it only had one seat, sheet metal panels, uh, basically nothing stock about it. On their old die cast, I actually got that accurate. And you can sort of see in there that they molded the ribbed floor as what it's supposed to look like. So that's not accurate in the new kit. As far as the quality of casting, this is actually really nice. It doesn't have the ejector pin marks that the old one did, where they had them right in the floor. You had to try to sand over carpet, which never works. But everything's nice and sharp here. No pin marks, no bad mold seams. I said quality looks really good, and this will be great when they do the release of the stock charger, but this just isn't right for Dom's car. And next up, we've got a sprue. It's got the brakes, front and rear. It's got the differential cover, shock absorbers, and the drive shaft. And all of these look really good. Nice sharp detailing, especially the bolt heads around the differential cover. That's a nice touch there. And the front end is detailed a lot nicer than the old kit was. That just pretty much had stubs and you were supposed to pretend that they were brake calipers. But this, they actually have some detailing on them. That's nice. And here we've got the front and rear axles. And those are really nice fine detail work on them. You do lose the working steering because the kingpins are cast as part of this, but if we compare it to the old one, it is a little more delicate, a little nicer looking overall. It'll be interesting to see where the torsion bars end up on the chassis because that was always something on the old kit, they fell a little bit short of where they needed to be. And here we've got a lot of the chassis details. We've got the tie rod, rear leaf springs. For some reason they're still including a separate heater box. Underhood detailing. Sway bar, radiator bulkhead, radiator, and firewall. Again, everything looks nice and sharp, some nice fine detailing on it. The tie rod looks especially nice. And so that's kind of the trade-off that we get for not having working steering anymore. And next we've got the seats, which, like the rest of the interior, is really nicely done, but completely inaccurate for Dom's car. Uh, he had racing bucket seats in all of his rides, never had the stock seats. But, it is nice to finally get some stock 70 Charger seats without having to buy an old MPC or a Promo and spend $100. We've also got, for the first time ever, a correct lower splash pan. Because the way the die-cast car was made, that was cut off right behind the marker lights. So you compare that to that. That's definitely a nice upgrade there. 
And we also have the steering wheel, the pedals, and the steering column. And next we've got the dashboard, center console, and the door panels. Which everything I said about the seats you can repeat here. These are really nicely done. It's great that we finally have some stock 70 charger components. Uh, not right for Dom's car. But when the inevitable stock version is released, these will be fantastic. Here's the engine. And this is a 426 Hemi, but it's done completely differently from the old kits. With the old kits, the engine was a separate piece from the transmission. And the old kit also had a shallower oil pan. There. This has a deep sump oil pan, and the engine and transmission are cast as one piece per side. Got valve covers, heads. This also has a simpler belt system. The old one had power steering on it. And for some reason, they always included two belts and two pumps in these old kits. So if you wanted to add power steering to this one, that'd be easy enough. Master cylinder, starter, distributor, coil, and the radiator hoses. And here we've got the rest of the body with the hood. And as I noted when we were looking at the box art, Dom's car in the first movie did not have an exposed supercharger belt. That's because the supercharger didn't actually work in that car. It was just a dummy that they had stuck to the underside of the hood. But they had that covered over and it is not here, so that's incorrect. Got the rear, which, once again, similar to the 69 kit, but it is different. Uh, you can see the ridges here, right around where the license plate is, are different. And the holes are a little bit smaller on the new kit. One of the things that was nice with the die casts is how easy you could swap parts between those and plastic kits. So I'd be interested to see if we can do a bumper swap on this kit like we could on that one. And here we have spring blocks, which I thought was a very cool idea. Uh, rather than have to recast parts for the stock versus Fast and Furious, they just included a set of spring blocks in here. And you can build it stock ride height or lifted. Your choice. Got some nice looking headers here. Got the V-brace for the rear seat area, rear shocks, the roll bar, which on the box art this roll bar looks really short, so I'm interested to see if it actually fits the car properly or if it is short. Uh, unfortunately, once again, this isn't accurate for Dom's car, which always had a full roll cage in it, but we'll let that one go, because none of the Revell kits have gotten that right so far. And the AMT kit was just a joke, so we'll not even bring that one up here. Got the supercharger belt. And this gets layered on over the stock belt that was on the last brew. That looks pretty good. And here we've got the tail lights. They look very much like what came in the 69 kit, but I don't know if we'll be able to swap out one for the other or if there's enough of a difference between them that we can't. We'll take a look at that later. And we've got the glass, which is going to look familiar to anybody who has built one of these kits before. We've got the rear window. We've got the windshield, which does have sun visors on it now. Washer bottle. Lights. Gauge faces. And wing windows did not stay on the sprue, but they are in there. The first chrome sprue is the Fast and Furious specific one. It's got the supercharger and hat, fan, it's got the American Racing Daisy wheels, which they look pretty good. The spokes seem a little bit rounded, but that might just be my memory failing me. Intake manifold, and the rear bumper without any of the bumperettes. 
And the last sprue is the stock charger components, which I'm sure is going to be included in any release of this kit. Yeah, windshield wipers, door handles, fuel fill, interior trim, shift lever, which is a nice looking pistol grip shifter. Nice looking, but once again inaccurate. And uh, speaking of, same thing for the grill. For anybody that wants a stock 70 charger grill, this is a really nice looking piece. It's got some really sharp detailing on it. The Charger RT here looks really good. If you're trying to build Dom's car, you could cut out the headlight doors and make your own headlights there, but you're still going to have the Charger here, which his car had that removed. So, again, uh, you know, great for those looking for stock Charger components, uh, maybe not so much for those looking for a really accurate Fast and Furious car. Uh, fan mount rear view mirror alternator side view mirror okay and so there we go uh, with the 70 we now have the full spectrum of the second gen chargers from Revell. i think anybody who's watched my channel or visited my site knows that i really like the old 6869 kit i've built a dozen of them. I've got two dozen more that I want to go into. I've got one on the bench right now with the Half-Life 2 muscle car. And so I was really looking forward to this one. And so far what I see actually doesn't disappoint. Uh, I've made some comments about it not being accurate to the Fast and Furious car, but that's really a pretty limited option for it. Uh, they're running it now, I'm sure, to pay for the new tooling. And once that's been out for a while, I'm positive that we will be seeing a stock release of this kit. For those that want a stock release now and don't want to wait, really the only thing that you'll be missing is the hood and the back seat. And I know that you can turn the 6869 hood into a 70 hood. I did it for one of my builds. Uh, back seat's going to be a little bit trickier. You can either do some scratch building or you can leave that out for right now. I am happy to see this finally out. This is not going to be the only one of these that I buy, though this one in particular is going to end up being parted out to a couple of things. The body is going to become the Ice Racer from the upcoming Furious 8 movie, and the rest of it is going to be going into my Charger Parts box, which is ever-growing, but very useful on more than one occasion. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments, and thanks for watching.